And I will start out by saying tonight our speaker is Alad Gross, which I think all of you know. Um, Alad, I have notes here about you being a civil rights and a constitutional attorney here in Missouri, but I'm going to let you talk about what you're up to. Oh, is that what I'm doing? According to your, I realize that, yeah. According to your web page, I should tell tell my wife so she doesn't think I'm up here doing nothing all day. <laughs> yeah. Well, hello everybody. Uh, it's good to see you all. I haven't seen a lot of you for a bit. Um, yeah, I think I know all of you already. So we can just get down to it. There's a lot of stuff going on in Missouri right now, and the civil rights thing is pretty important in Missouri. Uh, it's pretty important all over the country. Um, we just saw some of the issues that have really been facing uh, not only Missouri, but so many states um, on trial for quite some time the last few weeks. And uh, unfortunately, that's a problem that we are seeing all over the country. Um, it's one that we are seeing in Missouri. And unfortunately, we don't have uh, many folks in our government doing much about right now. This is my cat. She says, hello. She's going to be jumping in and out during this whole thing as much as she can to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. Um, yeah, so I've been working a lot on, uh, for those of you who don't know, I ran for attorney general this last time um, and uh, didn't make it out of the primary, but had a great time meeting all of you. And uh, I think we, we built quite a lot together in a relatively short amount of time. And that was around these kinds of issues of importance in our state. And so a lot of folks uh, asked me shortly after I lost, hey, are we going to keep doing this thing? And I was like, well, I've, what is this thing? And they were like, oh, you know, all that stuff you were talking about. So we have. And uh, there is an organization that is uh, came from the campaign. For those of you who noticed the hat, Take Back Missouri. So Take Back Missouri is a thing now. And a lot of the folks who worked in the campaign are working on it. And the idea there is uh, to increase civic engagement all over the state. Uh, whether that is uh, a group of folks, for example, who want to learn how to register voters in their area, we've helped a group do that. Whether that was a group of folks in Livingston County who wanted to organize to prevent a CAFO from moving in to uh, one of their um, uh, wonderful, wonderful, beautiful natural resources in the area and successfully stop them from doing that. That was a group that we worked with as well. We've worked with a lot of organizations that already exist uh, we, to, to help them do better uh, and connect with more folks. We've worked with people who realized that they were the only ones complaining or noticing that there was a major issue happening in their small town. And I encouraged them to be the leaders in their community because folks already realized that they were. And so I am super excited, if you can't tell, about the work that we're doing and, and the work that I foresee us doing. Uh, it has drawn the attention of folks uh, outside of Missouri. Apparently, we're on um, a, uh, oh, I, don't, I can't remember what town it is, but it's in Illinois. Their Democratic uh, local club actually has us highlighted as an example of what they should be doing in their area, too. And they're sending volunteers to us to kind of learn some more. Um, we've talked to some national organizers from some of the previous presidential campaigns uh, about what can we do in Missouri to really allow folks to get more involved. One of the things that you'll see if you follow, uh, if you're on Facebook or on Twitter, um, every day while session is in for the Missouri House and the Missouri Senate, every day um, I put up a list of all the bills that are available for folks to comment online, give public comment, uh, public input into what you think should happen about those bills. Uh, this last, I don't know if you all saw, but yesterday uh, there was a bill proposed by a state representative, a freshman state representative, uh, who wanted to, uh, what, as what he said, he wanted to ban the uh, 1619 project from uh, all schools uh, from being able to put, be put into any curriculum for anybody to talk about it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that was a, a project to really highlight the origin of slavery in the United States and how it has impacted history since then. And it's a, it's a long project. And, you know, there have been some critics about some of the things and they have changed some of the curriculum around, but this wasn't saying, Hey, let's only teach, you know, these parts or that it was ban the whole thing. And if you actually read the bill, it was more than that. It was actually banning any kind of curriculum that would discuss uh, systemic racial issues 
or oppression or talk about groups of people as if they were being targeted because they were groups of people. So that would include not only uh, American slavery, would also include such you know small things that we shouldn't teach like the Holocaust or genocide or just about anything else that's happened in history that's been terrible. Uh, and so I watched that whole debate um, and I know there's been a lot of input into that one, but uh, when you post on Twitter, you don't have all of the characters that you want in the world. For those of you who do not know, you have a certain amount of space. And uh, be because it was one tweet and a very long thing, and apparently people's attention spans aren't very long, some folks thought that Take Back Missouri was proposing this as a bill. Uh, and so that was a fun conversation I had with quite a few people, especially some national folks who are retweeting it after a while. So um, yeah, but no, we, we really want this to be something where folks can feel like they fit in um, and get involved, even if, you know, we might not agree on everything. Uh, there's still an opportunity for more folks to get involved. One of the things I started with uh, on this whole kind of pre-election thing was um, transparency in government. So I've been teaching kids for a long time, as many of you know, and uh, uh, that is what got me involved in public service in the first place and meeting elected officials and doing this whole thing. Despite looking like I'm 13, I've been teaching for about 13 years now, and uh, it helps me blend in. It's really, it's good. Kids will tell you things that they, they don't think, <laughs> not tell their teachers that they know. Um, but it has, um, you know, it's, it's really been sad to see the state of education in Missouri for the last many years. Um, our state itself has been defunding public education at a huge, terrible level. Um, and now apparently wants to tell them how to teach in their classrooms too, and what they can't teach and banning certain books or whatever else it is. Uh, but but the, the fact that our state has been defunding uh, education has really created such a division between those school districts that have resources and those that don't. Uh, those that can raise that gap in property taxes and those that cannot. And uh, that has always been uh, a very big issue for me teaching primarily in St. Louis City. Um, and uh, that's what got me involved. Uh, there was another guy who got me really involved and his name, uh, you might've heard of it, is Eric Greitens. Eric Greitens used to be the governor of Missouri and uh, he did a whole bunch of bad things and then he hid out for a while. Now he thinks he's gonna be the Senator for Missouri and I guess eventually the President of the United States of America. Uh, Eric Greitens, when he was governor, uh, really liked uh, hidden political contributions that are often called dark money. And if you've heard me speak, I rail on dark money all the time. Uh, when he was elected, he took a whole bunch of these hidden contributions. And then when he was there, he was like, wow, this stuff is so great. I'm gonna start my own fake charity. Uh, and I'm going to pour a whole bunch of money in here to fight right to work for fighting for right to work um, and just a whole mess of things. And uh, the he was being investigated for a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the day that he resigned, uh, a judge actually ordered him to reveal the names of his political donors that he was hiding. And then literally just a couple of hours later, he quit. So that's what tipped him over the edge. Uh, and then he rode off into the sunset. And unfortunately, nobody was going to hold him accountable, uh, which made me pretty upset. And so I took him and his organization to court. I ended up asking our current governor uh, for records of all of these communications that Greitens had with all of these people trying to sell out our government. And there were a whole bunch of communications there uh, that I didn't realize were there. Uh, and uh, the governor, our current one, refused to give them to me unless I paid uh, over $3,600 and waited at least six months before seeing them. Now, Missouri has a public records law called the Sunshine Law. Many states have public records laws that allow members of the public to see public records because they are our records. And many of these laws came after uh, President Nixon for the obvious reasons. And the idea was transparency in government can lead to more accountability in government. And so I asked the governor to reconsider what he was doing because I was making this request under the Sunshine Law. He refused. And so I took him to court and I've been in court um, for a long time, <laughs> many years. Uh, recently, actually in early February, um, I argued this case to Missouri Supreme Court and uh, it was received very well uh, the deputy attorney general um, argued on behalf of the governor um, with uh, our current attorney general in support 
as well. His name is Eric Schmidt. He's also running for United States Senate. And uh, um, so we're hoping for a good judgment. It can take some time for this to come back. And unfortunately, in the meantime, a lot of state entities are pretending like, um, because I won at the lower uh, appellate court level, um, they're pretending like my victory doesn't count, which to some legal degree is true. But since most judges have already said, yes, he's right, we shouldn't be charging all this money and we can't hide these records like we're doing, um, you would think that the government, instead of waiting for another court to say that, uh, they would at least err on the side of providing public records to the public. But no, not in Missouri, not today. So uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of folks who uh, are struggling to get transparency in our government until the Supreme Court uh, makes the ruling. So I'm hoping that that comes sooner than later. Uh, very recently, um, and actually I've got some news for you all today. Uh, very recently, um, I have had uh, direct legal issues with our current attorney general. Um, our current attorney general um, was, well, he's, so he's, he's like many other Republican attorneys general. He is a part of a national organization called the Republican Attorneys General Association. This organization um, also has a dark money, uh, fake charity thing. Uh, it is called the Rule of Law Defense Fund. There's a theme here. So Eric Greitens had one. Apparently Eric Schmidt's got one too. And his is a little bit bigger because it's nationwide, not just in Missouri. The Rule of Law Defense Fund made the news earlier this year because it put out a robocall calling for patriots to come to the United States Capitol on January 6th and stop the steal. And uh, that was, yes, that was a, an organization headed up by a chief law enforcement officer of Alabama. Uh, and it was supported by chief law enforcement officers all across the country, as long as they were Republican, including Eric Schmidt, who happens to be the vice chair of that organization. So uh, that led to some questions. Uh, how, 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 what are you all doing? <laughs> what in the world is this? I mean, this thing is called the Rule of Law Defense Fund, and you're literally telling people to like, hey, this election is, who cares what the law says? Go and take the Capitol. Like, what are you all doing? So uh, a, a friend of mine who does a lot of Sunshine Law cases too was very much up in arms about it, and uh, we both submitted a Sunshine request together to the Attorney General asking for a bunch of these communications. So similar to what I did about three years ago with the governor, uh, now we're looking into seeing what in the world was going on with this organization. Um, it took a while, but we did get um, some responses. And uh, one of those responses, um, oh, I can do, wait, I can do this fancy thing on the screen. So if you're looking at my screen, I'm gonna put it up on my, my little box and some of them will be bigger, some of them will be smaller. So if you can't read it, don't worry, I'm gonna tell you what it is anyway. But one of the, um, one, you, get, you get a whole bunch of these, you know, responses, email responses. And one of them was about this meeting that state attorneys general's staff members, taxpayer paid staff members were going to during work hours while we were paying them. They were going to political meetings. And one of them was called the War Games Summit. It was in September uh, for two days. The Solicitor General of Missouri, who is directed by the Attorney General, um, was sent there. And during this time, they talked about what should we do if President Trump loses the election? That was the topic of discussion. One of those sections in what they discussed was called election integrity. And as many of you know, uh, Republican attorneys general all across the country, including our own, we're leading an effort to uh, try to discredit the elections in other states, especially in Pennsylvania when it came to Missouri. I don't know. I guess he really had something out for Pennsylvania. But uh, our current attorney general uh, was really go just going on it. And they had planned this whole thing months and months before, just in case President Trump lost. This is what they were going to do. And we paid for it. We also found some other records from this organization. Um, oh, I'm excited. I get to put all these up. Uh, so one of them actually showed uh, how this organization operated. This organization, like I said, called the Republican Attorneys General Association, uh, would take donations. It would solicit huge donations from corporations. And the more money that you paid, 
the more access that you had, not only to the elected officials, but to the taxpayer paid staff in those offices. You didn't have to spend that much money to do it. So here's one of the examples, like one of the funding levels and all the passes that you get to go ahead and talk to a bunch of staff members. Uh, and why this is at least blowing my mind is when I used to work, I used to be an assistant attorney general in Missouri. And I've talked to other folks who used to work, you know, for all these. This was, you were explicitly told, don't do any politics on staff time with staff resources at all. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, it's illegal. Two, we actually had an attorney general in Missouri who went to prison for this, for less than this. I mean, he used a copy machine for some flyers, a political flyer. Uh, he didn't really direct uh, taxpayer paid staff to go plan how to overturn elections on uh, taxpayer hours. I, I, it blows my mind that nothing has still happened. Um, there were uh, also a number of uh, corporations that were involved here are some of them. Uh, so you've got some of the logos up and everything else, but uh, 3M uh, was one of them. Pfizer was one. And we all love Pfizer now for a lot of reasons. I can't wait for my second one. I'm getting on Saturday. Uh, but all of these, these different organizations, there were a whole bunch. Uh, and I know a lot of them like to talk about big tech and big tech censorship and how they all hate big tech. Well, you see Apple is on this one. Um, in addition to Apple, uh, Facebook, uh, in addition to Facebook, Twitter, all of these things are donating to this organization too. Um, these were some of them that got uh, special treatment because they got to speak with uh, the attorney general at some big event that they were holding for a whole bunch of folks. Um, and as you can see, uh, Coke from, yes, the Coke Brothers Network is also one of those organizations that are very involved in all this stuff too. Um, this troubled me a whole lot because these are some of the organizations, the corporations that the attorney generals are, or the attorneys general are supposed to be investigating. And we had a little bit of an issue here with our current attorney general, I'd say a very big issue, uh, where uh, he actually inherited a case from Josh Hawley. Uh, Josh Hawley was the attorney general right before him. Now he's a United States Senator. Josh Hawley actually took a uh, developer in St. Louis City to court. Uh, this guy's name was Paul McKee. Uh, I have been very familiar with Paul McKee's work for many years because he holds a whole bunch of land uh, in St. Louis. I'm in St. Louis City now, which is why I'm pointing around. Uh, but he holds a whole bunch of land here and he has let those properties uh, just crumble. And he holds up the city. He says, well, I need more money before I can start developing them. You need to give me more money. You need to keep giving me more money. And he keeps extorting the city for money and saying, hey, I'm not going to develop any of this stuff unless you do. He actually took state funded tax credits to develop these properties low income housing, all this stuff. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to develop this stuff so I qualify for this money. And well, he you know, gets rubber stamped and he sure did. Sometimes, not only would he not develop it, sometimes he would buy the property. Uh, he'd you know, do the whole thing, paperwork. And then after he gets his tax credits, he would just give the property right back to the person he bought it from. So I don't really want it anyway. But he would never return the tax credits. And in total, this guy took $40 million dollars in tax credits from the state. Didn't return any of it. So Josh Hawley, I couldn't believe it. Josh Hawley sues him. And he says, we're gonna get our money back. Well, Eric Schmidt uh, was appointed attorney general. He was appointed by a governor who takes a lot of money from Paul McKee. And Eric Schmidt through his career has taken a lot of money from Paul McKee and Paul McKee's family and Paul McKee's organizations and Paul McKee's lawyers. And lo and behold, Eric Schmidt settles this $40 million case for about $300,000, less than 1% of what we were owed as taxpayers. Um, he has a conflict of interest policy. Uh, he doesn't enforce his conflict of interest policy. Um, he's never audited. He's never looked at any of this stuff. He's never even checked if one of his donors, uh, he's also investigating. That's what he says. Uh, but it's, it's very, uh, uh, very interesting that one of his biggest supporters also got quite a great deal from uh, his office. And it's just unfortunate to see. And now to see how much more corporate influence is going into what is happening in the office. It's a pretty scary time uh, for, for the integrity, at least, of the attorney general's office right now, which is sad. Uh, so uh, there were a bunch of these records. And that 
in January. So by the time we got to March, we got some of them. I noticed in the records that I received that those records came from, uh, you know, attorney general accounts, all these things. None of them came from Eric Schmidt. Eric Schmidt doesn't have a state email. Mm. Yes. And so he doesn't have one because if you don't have one, it's very hard to ask for records because his argument is I don't have any. Now, the problem for him is that the Sunshine Law does not say that the public records only exist on public servers. We might have all heard stories about emails, lots of stories about emails, emails and servers and more servers and emails. Uh, you cannot take, and if any of you work for the government, uh, in case you don't know this, you cannot do public business on your private email accounts or text messages or whatever else you want and then not provide those into the public record. You can't do that. Uh, our attorney general appears to disagree uh, because I asked just to confirm, I asked the attorney general's office for the administrative records about how they do a search. So, you know, like, oh, we searched for uh, these words in this email account and here's where we went. Cause I wanted to see, did they actually search, um, you know, Eric Schmidt's records or not? And uh, they responded and they said, uh, that record is closed because it might be involved in litigation. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, what, what litigation? I haven't sued. And I've asked, I asked the guy, the other attorney, I'm like, have you sued them? And he's like, no, of course not. Well, I don't have time to sue them. I'm like, all right. So I'm, I'm, I'm just like wondering what in the world, what in the world is this? Uh, because they're using an exception that says uh, in case, you know, it's involved in litigation and uh, the sunshine law Unlike the Fifth Amendment, it cannot be used to uh, prevent you from testifying or providing evidence. You, you're not allowed to say, I can't, I'm not going to self incriminate myself, so I'm not going to give you documents showing wrongdoing. You're not allowed to do that under the Sunshine Law. That's not even the, the point of the Sunshine Law is for us to be able to see what our government is doing. And if they are doing something wrong, then they should be held accountable. And they're saying, no, if, if, if we can be held accountable, we're not going to give you the record. So that was their argument. And uh, I asked for them to uh, clarify because here's all the reasons why you can't do that. And they wrote back a very long letter. It was four pages of just lovely stuff, calling me a lot of names and uh, saying that there were a few reasons why they weren't going to give me the record. One was uh, it might be involved in this litigation thing. And two, you have criticized our office. <laughs> So therefore, we're not giving you the record. And I just, I couldn't believe what I was reading. So I get to the end of the letter and it's from this guy named Justin Smith. And I thought that name was really familiar. Justin Smith is the current chief of staff to uh, Attorney General Schmidt. Uh, once I sent that letter, he actually closed off his own email account. So now he doesn't have an email account either. He's got buffers, kind of like the Godfather. And in that, <laughs> what I saw, I looked him up. He used to be Eric Greitens' lawyer when he was the governor. So he was one of these guys in this council and everything else, and now he's working for Schmidt. All these guys are just hanging out with each other, and I don't know why he keeps getting a job, but he has one. Uh, there is a problem with telling somebody, if you work for the government, there's a problem with telling a citizen that uh, based on what you have said about me, I am not going to provide you with a government service. Does anybody know what that problem is? I'll, I'll give you a hint. It has to do with an amendment and it's a really important one and it comes very early. First Amendment. The, the first one. Yes, the first, I saw some mouthing of it. It's the First Amendment. You have a right to free speech in this country. And when you give, you, you, you speak in this country, you're supposed to be able to do so without having the government doing something bad to you. And in fact, some of the most protected speech in the United States as a result of all the laws we've had and all the history that we've had is when you criticize the government. That's what they did not want. They did not want to pe put people in jail. That was the primary one. But to do any of these bad things to people based on your criticism of government. Uh, and uh, this guy just put it right there. I mean, I just could not believe it. It's right there in front of me. So um, I uh, uh, was one very surprised by the content of the letter too. I was also surprised by how much time he must have spent on it because it would not have taken even a fraction of that time to give me the records that I have requested. 
and he is inviting me to sue. And he says that I'm going to be wasting taxpayer resources and taking away from all the wonderful work that he's doing, for example, like suing China, but not actually being able to sue them because he doesn't know how to serve them in China uh, or uh, I guess campaign. So I don't know. That's the time I'm taking away from him. So I did not want, I agreed with him on that one point. I did not want to waste any time, uh, especially mine, because this is going to take a long time to litigate. And I didn't want to waste any taxpayer resources. So within less, I spent a long time, within less than 24 hours, I responded with a longer letter explaining why he was wrong about everything. And just after everything, just explain, here's exactly what the lawsuit's going to look like. Don't do this. Let's not do this. Uh, and I gave him several weeks after that point. Uh, to this day, I have not received a response. Um, so I did file a lawsuit against our current attorney general. And yesterday afternoon, he was served at his office. So um, we'll be going to court uh, and doing this dance for a while longer. Hopefully this will be a little bit shorter. But we'll see. So, um, yeah, so currently I have litigation against our current governor uh, in which Eric Greitens will likely be deposed. Uh, litigation against our current attorney general uh, in which I don't know who's going to have to be deposed there. And uh, yeah, so just about if you know anybody else who's thinking about running for Senate, just let me know and I'll see if they're involved in this, too. It's just such a it's such an unfortunate mess right now because the Sunshine Law, uh, you know, for most folks, it's like, oh, whatever, you know, no big deal. But when you hear about, you know, the, the very basis of like why this thing is important, the things that are being hidden from us and the reasons why we're seeing these t just awful, stupid laws being proposed in the legislature or these terrible ideas being pushed forward by folks in the executive branch. Uh, it's just it's really sad to see. And I think it is, you know, really epitomizes just how much uh, folks in our current elected offices really just don't care about us. They don't care about us. They don't care about held, being held accountable. They're like, you know what? Sure, you have a lawsuit. I don't really care. I'll probably be a senator by the time you're done. So go ahead and do it. And uh, it is, it is uh, I wish I could say it's unbelievable that that's the way our government is working. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we all live here. And we know that this is what's happening right now. Uh, fortunately, Missouri has a long history of fixing problems like this. And we had a long bipartisan history of transparency and government promoting it. And I will tell you folks who used to work for, and I was very surprised, but folks who used to work for um, uh, uh, Ashcroft, uh, not the current one, uh, who used to work for Danforth, who used to work for Kit Bond, um, are all coming and saying, you know, this is absolutely ridiculous and we can't believe that this is the kind of stuff happening in government because they know that the more that you treat people like this as, I mean, especially as a party, uh, the worse it's going to hopefully end up being if we can get folks organized around that. So uh, the legal side of this is really important, but organizing around this is really important too, making sure that people know what's happening and making sure that people can get involved. So that's that's kind of why, um, you know, I've been really involved in both of these efforts right now and uh, continue to be. So, uh, yeah, thank you all for everything that you're doing. The local organizations are so freaking important all over the state. And, uh, you know, anything that we can do to help, please let me know. Uh, but I am very excited because we have a lot of young folks, not only who are working on the campaign, but who are also just seeing this and like looking and saying, oh, my goodness, like I want to. I want to do something in Missouri. And the more of that kind of energy we can get, um, you know, I think the much, much, much better off we'll be. Hey, Alad, am I yes. not correct that the if you have a problem with sunshine law violations with one of the departments in the government, whether it be your local county government or at the state level, the office that is set up to address those is the attorney general's office? The office that is set up by law to address those is the attorney general's office. If you would actually like to address those, I do suggest you call them, but you might have to call the law office of Alad Gross at the same time. So I'm around, but yeah, hopefully he'll do it. Every once in a while he does, very rarely, but um, usually it's, you know, to say that he did and for some political reason. But yes, that is the office that's supposed to be doing that. Sue Walker, you're up. Okay. Um, the Facebook... Uh, site that you talked about. I I think I got on it once and I saw something, but I haven't been able to get on it again. What is okay. that exactly? Oh, the one with all the bills and everything on it? 
Yeah, that's uh, Take Back Missouri. Um, and I will, I'll go get the link. I'll put it in the chat. Um, but if you go to takebackmo, like for Missouri.org, uh, there should be a link to the Facebook there too. But I'll, I'll get the actual link and I'll put it in the chat for you. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, why don't you also mention the fact that you do a blog once a week? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I do. Um, uh, it's called the Alad Pod. It is a um, uh, an online kind of interview show, sometimes it's a tutorial type of thing. Um, but it is an online town hall. Uh, we try to bring some, you know, a, a guest. Sometimes it's I mean, oftentimes it's from the state. Sometimes, um, you know, we've had like national experts who have come on to talk about a specific issue policing. We did a whole lot of those um, uh, last year, but it's something that came out of the campaign and uh, I've just kind of continued doing it. So it is a live thing that we do uh, usually once a week, sometimes a little bit more uh, every once in a while when I need a break, sometimes a little bit less. Um, and then it comes out as an audio podcast after that. Um, and so the last few have been really focused on uh, eviction issues in Missouri rental assistance and utility assistance programs. Um, I'm doing a lot of work right now uh, with folks primarily in St. Louis County uh, who are facing eviction. And uh, it is there are a whole lot of folks. So I put a whole bunch of tutorials up there. But people, what's nice is you can watch it from just about anywhere and ask questions from just about anywhere. And the idea is uh, we really wanted it to be, um, you know, this open open process for folks to get more involved and to really have their questions answered. So uh, it's been a good, yeah, it's been a good time. Susan, I saw you raise your hand. Yeah, a lot. Um, you and mention Eric Greitens and yeah. he's yeah. on all of our minds. Are yeah. any of the lawsuits that you're working on going to be able to prevent him from running for U S Senate? No. So uh, you can be prevented from running in Missouri if you uh, are a felon. Uh, and there was an opportunity, many opportunities for him to become one of those. Uh, unfortunately he traded away his job in a plea deal. And uh, I don't know how many folks uh, have that opportunity in America, but uh, he sure did. So he did that and he's back. Um, I will say that I think, I don't know. I mean, a lot of the stuff that um, I uncovered through the last several years and potentially that may come out after winning at the Supreme Court level, um, because those his records, that's what's on the table, right? So, so at the Supreme Court, there's a win there. Um, one, Right before it got appealed, he was set up for a deposition. Um, a, f a bunch of other folks he was working with are set up for that. So uh, there's some pretty, I would think, some pretty damaging stuff that could come out of that, but it won't be anything that would disqualify him. It would just, uh, hopefully voters would see it and they would learn the truth. And I know I'm talking to a whole lot of them right now about him specifically. Diane, did you have a, Stalder, did you have a question, a comment? Uh, anybody else? Just unmute yourself, please. Uh, a lot. Of, it's fun to listen to you. It, it, I mean, it's amazing. Oh, oh, okay. I have one here. Um, let's see. He, Sabrina reminds us he actually uh, yes. had a fake, fake uh, veterans organization. Yeah. He. So okay. So I, I will give him some credit. So that organization. Um, that, that one was actually, it was actually doing some pretty good work. Um, and uh, so he had to, he had, he had a fake charity. He started when he became governor. And this is the one where he funneled all of his political money through. That one was totally fake. Uh, was, was just, he was calling it a charitable thing, but he was using it entirely for politics and to push right to work and whatever else his agenda was. The veterans one, um, <laughs> he actually stole from. So he stole a list of donors from that organization. Uh, and then that organization had to like, what in the world? And they, they just became thrown into this whole mess. Um, a staff member from that organization was actually deposed and entirely was like, Eric Greitens stole this. We had no idea what he was doing. We didn't even know he still had access to this stuff. We can't believe he did this. And he told me to lie for him. So all of that, I mean, that's all on the public record. And one of the reasons that he was going to be impeached for too, he was actually charged 
um, for uh, it was called the computer tampering. But that felony, one of them, that felony charge actually came from him stealing from the veterans organization. That was the one that he traded in his job uh, to avoid prosecution on. They had him pretty much dead to rights on that one. So, um, yeah, that was unfortunate. That prosecution probably should have proceeded on that one. Um. Well, let me ask let me ask you a question a lot yeah with all the with all the stuff that you pointed out with all the history that Greitens has had and the fact that it's been in the news media over and over again why is he getting such uh, strong support out of the Republican party <sighs> okay so air Greitens for the last few years now has uh, really been hanging out a lot in DC um, one of, and actually, um, there's a chart I have, uh, and I can put that link up too, but there is, I made this, you know, you know how you're looking at people and there's always the joke about, yeah, people's faces up all up on the wall and then strings attached and everything else. Uh, so I was doing that. And then somebody said, oh, there's a website that does that better for you. So you don't have to look like a crazy person every time somebody looks at your house. So uh, I did do that for um, Greitens, especially around this whole dark money stuff. And where was the money coming from? It's very hard to track this stuff. Um, he, his, uh, one of the people who worked on his campaign came from the Republican Governors Association. So I've been talking a lot about the Republican Attorney General's Association. There's also one for the governors. The one for the governors has a ton of money, whole bunch of it. And they have a lawyer, well, they had a lawyer named Michael Adams. Uh, that lawyer ended up working for Eric Greitens and you know, doing a whole bunch of work for him. He was out of D.C. and Kentucky. And then uh, this other guy named Nick Ayers. Nick Ayers came from the Republican Governors Association. A few other guys did too. And they came and they basically propped up uh, Greitens and they ran his whole thing. Nick Ayers, um, he has a bunch of shell companies and, uh, you know, some of them they do like purchasing for media buys and a whole bunch of, but a bunch of campaign stuff. Of the $32 million about that Eric Greitens raised to run for governor, 27 million went to Nick Ayers companies. So this guy came to town, made a whole bunch of money, and then he left. He went. And he went to go to D.C. to work for a guy named Mike Pence. He was his chief of staff. Uh, and there was a lot of connection between Mike Pence and Eric Greitens because Mike Pence's uh, lawyer for his PAC was Michael Adams, the lawyer for Eric Greitens, who was also in Kentucky. By the way, Michael Adams, who is also subject to a deposition in the case I've still got going on, uh, has since run for office. He is the Secretary of State of Kentucky now. So all these guys are pretty much connected. There was a pretty big network around Eric Greitens. And it sure seemed like on the day that he resigned, when all these dark money, you know, these names were going to be out there, uh, somebody ended that that this you're done being governor uh, and uh, lay low for a little bit. And we got you. Um, one of the things that Eric Greitens did was he uh, started working for the Navy again. Uh, Mike Pence was involved in that. Um, so there's a lot of connections between him and uh, eventually the Trump organization and folks who were supporting him too. He's been on a lot of those kind of weird cable shows with folks. Uh, Steve Bannon is one that he's been close with. Rudy Giuliani he hangs with all the time. And so um, I don't know. I mean, he's getting support from like those folks. He's not getting much support from anybody in Missouri yet. Uh, so I, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess if he runs for whatever he's trying to run for uh, somewhere else, it might work a little bit better. But he has been making the round so far. Um, and, uh, I think establishment folks are certainly more behind Eric Schmidt right now, but I think they're expecting more people to jump into that race. And so the question is, if a lot of people jump in, does Eric Greitens have an advantage because he's going to have that same 30, whatever percent folks voting for him and they're just going to stick to it with him. So he's getting a lot of national support, uh, from that kind of group. That's for sure. Um, and I think it's because he's been buddy, buddy with them for a long time and, uh, they, you know, his story is that he was wrongfully prosecuted and the liberals came after him. And unfortunately, given the state of our media today and, and what people uh, see and what they're hearing, uh, it is a story that folks uh, really do believe.
in a lot of parts of Missouri. And I've spoken to a lot of folks who even people who are like, hey, I'm all about your campaign. I totally agree. And I love the ideas. But, you know, what they did to Eric Greitens was really bad. Like it was really wrong. And uh, that narrative has not been one that has been combated enough in Missouri. And I, I'm, I'm a bit worried that he knows that, too. Well, that, one other quick question that comes to mind, having listened sure. to you talk about all the different uh, shenanigans that goes on. And I mean, it, it, right off the bat, it strikes me that this would almost be a, a RICO case under federal law. Is, yeah. is, can the federal government, can the federal government come in and investigate this as RICO, uh, which is organized with, what is it? Uh, Racketeering. That's the R, yeah. 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 I mean, because really, it really strikes a, a, almost a mafia style operation amongst the Republican uh, legislator, legislators and uh, executives in this state. Yeah, it's it's an interesting question. See, the, the, the part that's hard is there's not um, much accessible information on the surface of all this stuff, right? And it's designed to be that way. That's kind of the idea behind hiding people's names and all this stuff. Um, there are prohibitions, even in Missouri's constitution, on hiding political donors and, and you know, running organizations that are designed to conceal them. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the guy who enforces that is the attorney general. And so if he doesn't want to enforce it, well, here we are. Um, and so that's a problem, too, uh, when the folks who are supposed to be enforcing these rules aren't quite doing it. Uh, the big issue that could get him in a lot of federal trouble, because now we're talking about maybe a federal Department of Justice investigation or something else, would be if any of that uh, was set up to solicit f donations from folks overseas um, who are not citizens of the United States. If that was the case, that would be a pretty significant issue. There was some discussion about that when it came to Eric Greitens. Um, it, I don't know how far it went or if that's still an ongoing thing. I do know that the FBI was interviewing people who were pretty close to him, um, including one person who I know very well, who also uh, uh, had high hopes for Eric Greitens on the campaign trail and was very uh, upset when uh, his ethics reform plan uh, <laughs> seemed to go out the window the moment he became governor. Um, so I, I don't know where all that stuff went, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great question uh, about whether there's something deeper that folks can, can look into here. But um, yeah, unfortunately, the laws of Missouri and the way that they're being forced right now are not, not doing us any favors. Anybody have any questions for uh, a lot? Here's your chance. I mean, the man is knowledgeable of what, yes, Polly. Polly. I'm just wondering uh, if Elad thinks Democrats have a chance to get that Senate seat. In 22. Uh, so I know, um, you know, it, it kind of depends. So every day is kind of different now, right? Um, I think that it is not the best proposal because I've been seeing this a little bit. Oh, we want Eric Greitens to make it out of that primary. Um, I don't think we want that because then you're really playing with some fire. I think, I think that uh, at, at, at the, be the best situation for Democrats in Missouri for that seat is that we barely win that seat, right? Like it's going to be really close and the Democrat just pulls it out. Um, and I think that includes, and some polling has already indicated this, uh, that Eric Greitens is doing just fine in the polls right now. Um, I think that there are... Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out of the national administration right now that are very positive. Now, I don't know if the communication is really reaching people in Missouri, but uh, this infrastructure plan, um, a lot of like the rental and utility assistance, all these programs that are coming out now um, can be hugely beneficial for Missouri. Unfortunately, we do have a legislature that, for example, when we decide that we're going to expand Medicaid and let more folks access health care, uh, they're saying, no, we're going to find a way to, to stop that from happening. And so, I mean, there's, there's some attempts there, uh, it seems, or at least it feels like to say, oh, no, bad federal government because a Democrat is the president now. We don't want that. Um, and so I don't know, that's, that's having somewhat of an impact too. And I, I don't think that we're doing super well in reaching, um, you know, as many of the uh, folks that we could be persuading as we, 
we could be doing. And, and part of that is because a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of national organizations have been writing off Missouri as a result. And, uh, you know, we, we'd be lucky to have somebody, um, you know, Vice President Harris was actually in the St. Louis area, but it'd be really nice if we can get more folks coming to Missouri uh, and really pitching these ideas and talking to folks. But, uh, you know, uh, we haven't seen too much of that. So I think, you know, I, I think it depends who our nominee is going to be. Um, and how they're really going to play it. My view is, and I hope that this is what happens, is that whoever is the nominee really focuses on building up the infrastructure of the party in Missouri um, and really focuses on bringing more folks to that infrastructure and finds a way to take, because there's going to be all these resources pouring in, whoever it is, I mean, all this money. And uh, even if it's not like a lot compared to what's going to happen in Pennsylvania, but it would be really nice to see that money instead of just going to one person to going to our state and building it up and especially going to helping folks running for local office and running for um, auditor. I mean, uh, Nicole is such a good auditor. And, and if we can't, I just, uh, it just breaks my heart uh, to think about what happened in the, the governor's race, but um, you know, we, that's, that is such an important office and uh, you know, we really need to, we really need to highlight her, I think as much as possible, but yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Um, there's plenty of time and uh, I know there's plenty of folks who've been looking at it. Um, and I know um, I think I know everybody who's been considering it so far. So um, you know, I'm excited about them um, and what potentially we could do, but um, it's going to be a lot of work. That's, that's for sure. And I, I think we're, we are served better if we think about this more over the long term and what that would look like um, and invest uh, accordingly. Well, so short answer. Know. Yeah, there's a chance. Darn it. Of course there's a chance, but you know, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, we also, I, there's just so much going on from one day to the next. Uh, who knows? I mean, Eric Grides, maybe he will be the nominee, or maybe Eric Schmidt will be, and you know, something will come out about how uh, you know he personally was on that robocall with. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? I don't know, but uh, yeah. And then, and then, with a lot of the congressional folks looking at it too, that means a lot of folks in the state legislature are going to be looking to move to Congress if that happens, uh, because if you are if you are in Congress and you choose to run for this. You don't get to keep it, right? You can't run for both in Missouri. We don't let you do that. So you pick one. That means you're giving up your congressional seat, which means somebody's going to want to go get your congressional seat, which means that that gives Democrats a lot of opportunity to get folks running against somebody who is not an incumbent, um, who, heck, I mean, you know, might have some crazy ideas too. But um, yeah, I, I think that there's some opportunities to pick up the local seats. So that's why, that's why I'm so, we have to look at this as a bigger thing rather than just like, oh, here's the shiny, shiny object in front of us right now. But um, I will tell you, if Eric Greitens is that nominee, it's going to be hard not to look at that one and just ugh, be really pissed off every day until the election. So any other questions? Hearing none. Alad, you're always fun to listen to. You're always full of good information. We appreciate you. Keep up the great work. If any way we can help, don't hesitate to give us a holler. Thank you. Thanks for having Everybody. me. Great to see you. Great. Thank you, Alad. Good, good hearing yeah. from you, Alad. Yeah. Great Thank you, you for what you're doing for Missouri. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, soon we'll all get our shots. We'll all get to hang out and uh, it'll be a good time. We, we all have, I think we all have our shots down here. That's great. Yeah, I'm getting my second one on Saturday, so don't call me on Saturday night, I hear, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all yeah, take yeah. care.